there's a lot of people that call themselves Christians all around the world. We throw the name around. In fact, sometimes Christianity gets a bad name uh, because it's, uh, you know, uh, well, do you know those Christians did this or those Christians did that? But tonight I want to talk to you for just a few minutes before we kick everything off. You've got a lot of speakers and bands. We've got music from Africa and, and speakers from India and all kinds of guests that have flown in from all around the world to be here. But I want to talk to you about real transformation. You know, people that are really followers of Christ are not just people that go to church. Not just people that they, they say they're like loud mouth Christians that say stuff. But these are people that are that have really been transformed. Is there anybody here that's been really authentically transformed by Jesus? Let me hear you shout real loud. See, because some people think that Christianity is just a religion, just another belief system, just another thing to believe. But those of us that have had an encounter with Jesus, we know what it means to be really transformed. And it starts with being authentic, being honest. You know, we are great at being fake. In fact, I think young people are the greatest at it because we are fake on Instagram, we're fake on Facebook, we're, we act like we're the perfect self and the, it's our perfect life. And, but Jesus, if you're going to have a real encounter, you've got to be authentic. You've got to admit, you know what, my life's kind of jacked up. My life's kind of messed up. Now when I was young, it was a while ago, but I, there's some things that every generation is the same when you're young. You try to be cool, you try to pretend like you're all that when you're not. And I was the same way. You know, always try to put your best foot forward, your best face forward. But now, more than ever, with all the fake things, fake friends on Facebook, you know, you don't like them, you just block them. You don't have to work things out. You don't have to forgive them. Augmented reality, virtual reality, all these different things force us to have to think, what's really real? Is Jesus just another one of those fake things? Just another religious thing? Just another thing that people do on Sundays? And in order to really be transformed, you got to understand the condition of humanity. You might be 14, you might be 17, you might be 21. Humanity all around the world has the same thing. It's a disease called iniquity. What is this thing called iniquity? The mystery of iniquity, the Bible calls it. Think about this. Think about the thing that you have thought of that is so horrible that you would never tell anybody that you even thought that. Where did that thought come from? How did it get inside you? Think about the horrible state of mind that somebody like Hitler must have been in, dreaming up how to kill millions of people in the most horrific of ways. Think about, for example, mass murderers or people that would steal girls and, and teenage girls and sell them into sexual slavery. What is going on in their mind? What would provoke them to do it? It's called iniquity. This thing that we're born with, every human, doesn't matter what part of the world, doesn't matter what religion you were brought up with or is in your culture, we're all born with this thing on the inside. It's like a disease called iniquity. It's this twisted craving for ugliness and for sin. And it creeps on the inside of us, even though we don't like it. For example, did you ever realize no one ever, did, ever had to teach you how to say, mine, when you're little? That's mine. Be selfish. It's, it comes from this thing called iniquity. No one had to teach you how to beat, beat up your little brother or, you know, not leave me alone or, you know, say something mean. It's from iniquity. And this thing called iniquity, it's like on the inside of us. And it just kind of, it, it get, it, it, unless it's reined in, it begins to dominate our whole life. We end up doing things and we hate the fact that we do them. We don't even know why we do them, but we do them and we do them and we do them. And when we commit, we'll never do it again. And then we do it again. And it like makes us go crazy. The mystery of iniquity. Why do I keep doing things that I hate? It's in everybody. And if we're going to have a real transformation, we got to understand, hey man, we were born jacked up. It's like a cancer of the soul. Scripture calls it sin, but it's really actually worse than sin. We throw the word sin around and we, it's hard to understand what really is going on. It's this infection of our soul that every one of us are born with. And so Jesus offers us the opportunity to be genuinely transformed. But how does that happen? A lot of people, well, I just, um, I go to church. Some people hear about this transforming thing. Jesus is supposed to change my life, but they don't feel very changed. They don't feel like much has changed. I prayed a prayer. Maybe you felt a moment in church or at a concert 
or at a conference and like, wow, I really felt God, but now after a few days, I feel like the same old person. I just want to give you three quick things to think about tonight, the rest of this conference. Three quick things. If you want authentic transformation, real transformation, you want to get rid of this iniquity, this mystery of iniquity, just three quick things to get rid of this infection. No matter what you do, you can't get rid of it. Psychologists have tried, governments have tried, send people to jail, do this, counsel it out. You can't. It only comes out with a miracle, an authentic transformation that happens in our heart. we got people that I would call mental Christians. I believe the right thing. Jesus died on the cross, the Bible, blah, blah, blah. And they're mental Christians. They believe the right things, but they haven't had an encounter with Christ. Jesus didn't come just to get us to believe the right things. He came to transform us. So we've got mental Christians, and I believe the right things, but how come I'm not changed? That's a frustration. You, can, you know what? You can believe the right thing and not be authentically changed or transformed. You've got cultural Christians. Well, everybody's kind of a Christian around here, you know, and we say God bless you, and, you know, we, 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 uh, we believe, you know, uh, that all the, all the Christian emblems, we say grace before our, our meals and stuff like that, and, and, and we, we do all the things that Christians do. It's sort of a culture but they haven't been transformed. Maybe it's because you grew up in a Christian family or in a Christian, you know, uh, village or town or something like that. You've also got social Christians. These are people that hang out with Christians because they're fun things to do. We go out to eat and we like to go to worship. We kind of praise together and we just have fun together. But it hasn't been transforming. They're just kind of in it for the fun. In it for the fellowship. In it for the relationships. Understanding our dilemma is the first step to getting really transformed. The dilemma is we're born with iniquity. And you can try to pretend all you want. It's not there. It is. And when you understand what we're born with, you understand how important it is to be transformed. The symptoms of this, self-centeredness, loneliness, brokenness, habits that you can't break, cruel to others, jealousy. There's, the list is long. It's evidence that our soul is sick and we don't know what to do. And putting a fake Christian face on as a mental or a social Christian or a cultural Christian doesn't change you. So, what do we do? Authentic transformation comes with three, number, three things. By following, by submitting, and by apprenticing. Ongoing transformation. See, it starts with getting transformed, but then some of you might think, well, I got changed, but now I sort of seem bored. Some, there's so many young people that say, you know, I, I kind of became a Christian. It was exciting for a while. We had youth camp. We had a good, you know, concert we went to or a conference. But then we're not changed anymore. We just kind of got a little zap. Ongoing transformation happens when you follow these three things. Number one is following. You know what Jesus asks us to do is not just pray this prayer and everything will be fine. He said... 32 different times, when he was talking about how to get connected to his father, he said, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Take up your cross. Follow me. He said, follow me. The first step in transformation is following. It's not just chanting a prayer. It's choosing to become a follower of Christ. A lot of people think, well, does that mean you accept Christ? Well, you know, Jesus never asked anybody to accept him. He asked everybody to follow him. He said, if you want to get the hookup with the father, you've got to follow the son. Following Christ, you think, well, how can I follow somebody who, who I can't see? Somebody who's invisible. Let me ask you this. How do you follow a band you've never met? How do you fo follow a sports team you've never met? Them personally? Well, you get to know the stats. You get to know their lyrics. You get to know some of you are creepy. And you, like, get on them. And you, like, you get online. You Google them. You go, oh, you find out where they wrote the song. And when they got married. And when they first got together, the band. And, like, you Google them, right? You're a follower. You're proud. You know all their lyrics. You know all their stats. That's how you follow. Well, that's how you follow Jesus. You Google him. Google God. Google Jesus. Get to know him. What's he about? What about this? He said this. Who says that? He, what do you say about this topic? What about this topic? You follow him. You follow his teachings. You follow his lifestyle. Followers. We're born all on a path. We're following this path of self. It's iniquity. It's all about me. It's my stuff, my fun. I'm following my path. And Jesus comes along and says, hey, here's another path. You can follow self or you can follow me. This is what he did to his disciples. He said, come, follow me. Then he walked away. Whoever followed him, followed him. Whoever didn't, didn't. It was very clear who were followers of Christ. He invites us to become followers. And 
we follow tonight and then we follow tomorrow. It's like a whole different path. Instead of just saying, watch this, I prayed this prayer, everything's fine. He goes, no. He goes, making a decision to be a follower of Christ is saying, I'm not going to follow my path, the path of sin and selfishness. I'm going to follow Christ. And the moment you take the first step, bam, brand new heart. <sighs> he breathes life into you. Wow, I never had that before. And that's only the first step. Following him, there's another step tomorrow. And there's a whole path, a whole way of life, a whole teaching that he has for us. A whole uh, opinion on every topic. Love, sex, friendships, every topic. Following him. It's a whole path and it's an adventure. So maybe you're frustrated because you're like, I want to be transformed. I thought I was transformed, but now I'm bored. Are you a follower? Following is something that you do. It's an action word. It's not just, I prayed a prayer and I'm just hanging out. I'll see you in heaven, God. Following is like, I'm going to follow him every day. If you want an ongoing transformation, you got to keep following. Number two, submitting. Now, we all love that word, don't we? We love to submit. This is the deal. How many of you have ever given your heart to Jesus? Let me see your hand. Now, we, we use those words sometimes. What do we really mean by that? We're really taking the center of ourself and we're submitting it. We say, I want you to be in charge of my heart. Do you know? Listen carefully. The heart and the will in the Bible are the same word. Heart and the will. When you submit your heart, when you give him your heart, you're giving him your will. You know what your will is? It's everything you have say so over. You have say so over what you eat, what you wear, how you treat people, how you act, how you love, how you don't love. Giving him your heart is giving him everything, your little kingdom. And you're saying, everything that I have a decision about, I'm submitting to you. Giving your heart and your will is the same thing. So every day, one of the things I do is, you know, we don't just submit one time. We open up our heart and we say, Lord, I'm going to submit to you today. My heart, my will. And I want to ask you to sniff around and see if there's any part of my will, any part of me that I have say so over that I haven't submitted to you. Because when you do that, you keep having more transformation. In fact, one of the things I do is I ask Jesus each day, would you come and and cleanse that part of my heart that's not submitted, that part of my will that I was doing my own thing yesterday. Because I don't, I don't want to be like that, Lord. I want to submit that part to you today. Some of you are thinking, but, you know, I, I prayed a prayer and I, I, I gave him my heart. But are you submitting your heart and your will every day? Because when you do, you get transformed every day. See, the transformation is not just when you take the first step. It's every day when you take a step closer and you get a little bit more of the iniquity washed out and a little bit more of his presence in your life. It's, it's by following. It's by submitting. Submitting our heart, our will, our, our day to him. And then finally, it's apprenticing. Apprenticing is this thing that used to be done where, for example, if a man was a carpenter, he would teach his son to be a carpenter or a shoemaker or a clothes maker. And the son or the daughter would hang out long enough with their parent to learn how to do that thing. They would watch and they would do. They would watch and they would do. They would watch and they would do. Apprenticing. And that's what the disciples did hanging around Jesus. They saw the way he treated a widow. That's how they would treat a widow. They saw the way he would treat a blind person. He would pray for them, watch them get healed. And that's what they would do. An apprentice or a disciple, somebody who learns and then does. Learns and then does. You watch and then you do. Apprenticing. Choosing to love people, for example. Even when you don't feel like it, because you know Jesus would. So you, you see what he did, and then you do it. you got to know sometimes Jesus was tired. He didn't feel like loving somebody, but he did anyways. He's being pressed in by the crowd. He didn't want to be kind, but he was anyways. Apprenticing means learning from our master and doing what he says. And you know what happens when you do that? It changes you. Even though you're loving you're choosing to act loving when you don't feel loving. It changes you to become more loving, become more like him. So when Jesus was talking about repenting, you know, he said it a lot, repent. What he literally meant is this word in Greek, metanoia, means change the way you think about every topic in life, about sex, about love, about friendships, about career, about money. Change the way you think. Learn from your master. Apprentice him. You're wondering... But I thought I was changed. I thought Jesus really changed my life. But now I sort of don't feel transformed anymore. He wants to transform us each day a little bit more. By following, are you following him? Are you really 
following him. Whether you're here in Manila or anywhere around the world, are you, are you following, you're taking another step, learning, like you, just like you would a sports team or a music group. Are you submitting your heart, your will every day? And are you seeking to be an apprentice? Because if you go back to this mystery of iniquity, it, that transformation happens because of the mystery that happened at the cross. And it's, it's a mystery. You know, we like to figure everything out, but some things are just mysterious. We know it's true, but it's hard to understand. It doesn't mean it's not cool and that it's not amazing. This mystery of iniquity was solved with the mystery of the cross. And it's all bundled up in this verse. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Tonight, I want you to close your eyes with me. Before we go any further in this evening, I want you to imagine all the iniquity, the cravings of horrible things that maybe somebody like Hitler had in his heart, the worst criminals in the world. Think of the worst things you ever thought of. Imagine all of those horrible things bundled up into a big ball, to a big, massive heap of iniquity. And scripture says that all of that was laid on Jesus on the cross. And the mystery of the cross is that Jesus took the, the iniquity of mankind. He took it so that it doesn't have to live in your heart, doesn't have to live in my heart. You can live with a transformed life. And I'm going to ask the Lord tonight to begin to transform us. See, he wants to transform us day by day. Taking another step towards him. Maybe you're here and you... If you were to be totally honest, you'd say, I'm kind of a mental Christian. I believe the right things, but I don't feel very changed. Oh, maybe I'm a cultural Christian. I'm just hanging out with my friends, social Christian, doing the fun things. But I haven't been transformed or maybe haven't been transformed lately. Can I just ask you to be honest here tonight? Ask yourself, am I really a follower of Christ? Are you following now? Maybe you followed for a while, but you just kind of go to church now. You don't really follow him. You know, it's like a band. You sort of like the band, but you don't really know their lyrics. You like their music, but you don't really follow them. I'm afraid there's a lot of people in church like that. They know about Jesus, but they're not followers. They just kind of pray to prayer. You're wondering why you haven't been transformed lately. Maybe you submitted your life at one time, but you haven't been submitting regularly. And you wonder why does it feel boring or dead or not alive? Maybe you're not submitting. Your heart, your will. It's just humbling ourselves. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I submit myself to you. My heart and my will, it belongs to you. Or maybe 
you haven't been transformed or you haven't felt his transforming power because you haven't been apprenticing. You haven't been mimicking and duplicating what Jesus looks like in this world. Can I just ask this global youth day in, that's established in the name of Jesus Christ here in Manila or all around the world, you say, you know what? I need to do one of those three. I need either follow, start following, submitting or apprenticing. Would you be bold enough to say, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna step out of just being somebody who acts or hangs out with a Christian group. I wanna be a follower. I'm gonna be submitting, I'm gonna be apprenticing. If you need to do any one of those three, what, could I just ask you to, to just signify that? Just hold up your, not just your hand, but hold up a phone or whatever device you might have with a light and say, you know what? I want his light to shine through me 